Lord God, in Jesus' name, help me to fix my mind on you. I'm a free person, I can do whatever I want to do. What about my problems here and now? Confusion, anger. We are living in a world filled with confusion. I see so much indignation, sharp opinions. People are easily offended by, you name it. And anger always lingers just below the surface. But the Bible tells us, fix your minds on things above, not on earthly things. In other words, first look at God and the things of God. And then look at the world, at your life. The end wasn't the end. Didn't really end. The Bible tells us, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. And then you may think, well, that's easy for you to say, Dwight. Easy for me to say. Did you look at the world, at the confusion? Do you know my life? What's happening to you? How can you say, set your minds on the things above somewhere there? And what about my life? What about the world? What about my problems here and now? When uh, this corona, when this pandemic just started, I saw a lot of movies, pictures, people posted all kinds of things. They said, when this pandemic has finished, this is what I will do. Then you saw them dancing, shouting, doing all kinds of weird things. But now, this pandemic has finished or it didn't finish. I don't see any joy. It didn't really finish, it just faded away. It wasn't like a sports match you know, football or something like that. After the final whistle blows, then it's finished. Or when you have, where, or when you are studying, you receive your degree or your diploma, and then it's finished. Or when you were in hospital and now you are discharged, and then it's finished. But this Corona, this pandemic, it's gone. It's finished and not finished. When the next wave hits me. The pandemic has finished, this crisis has finished or it didn't finish. And next, the next wave, the next crisis hits us. There is a war in Europe. We have problems with the environment, economic problems, a lot of uncertainty. Different nations want to fight with one another. It's like a big, huge wave hit me. I almost drowned, but I survived. But I cannot even rest, I cannot rejoice. I cannot even catch my breath because the next crisis hits us. And then the Bible tells us, the Bible tells you and me, fix your eyes, fix your minds on things above, not on earthly things. And then again you may say, well, why? Why should I fix my eyes? Why should I fix my eyes on Jesus, on this God? while at the same moment, look at my life, look at the world. Shouldn't I pay more attention to the worldly things than the godly things? No, no, the Bible tells us, tells you today, fix your eyes on the things above. And why? That's the question now. A prisoner of nonsense? Who? Me? The Bible tells us here, listen to the word of God. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. The Bible, God wants you and me that we can become prisoners of this nonsense. Philosophy, ideas, wisdom. Maybe you don't know the word philosophy. Maybe you don't like the word philosophy, but all people have this, it's your wisdom what you think is true about life, how to behave, how people behave, why they behave like they behave. This whole thing all together we call philosophy. And it says here, it's deceptive. It wants to capture you. It wants to make you a prisoner of these, I don't want to say conspiracy theories, but those are part of it. But all kinds of ideas, how the world works, what you should do, who to blame, who not to blame, why you are so good, how you can be prosperous in life, how to, how to behave, all those things together are your philosophy. And the Bible tells us that those things are empty. They are just like, you blow your breath, you see it for a while, then it's gone. But they want to capture you, they want to make you a prisoner 
of these evil ideas. And this, uh, and this philosophy is based on human tradition and the basic principles of this world. Human tradition, <clears throat> people don't want to have God in their life. They want to be God themselves. That's why they say there is no God, because they themselves want to determine their life and their ideas. And they want to capture you with their philosophy, with their wisdom that is not wisdom, because it will destroy you at the end. So all this philosophy that wants to capture you, wants to make you prisoner, it comes from human tradition and the things of this world, demonic forces. And they are using all kinds of things, maybe even your family, to fill your mind, your spirit with these destructive ideas, these destructive concepts of life, how to behave, who to blame, and you name it. And they come through social media, through your teachers maybe, maybe your own spouse, whatever you name it. Demons will rejoice when they make you a prisoner. And it says that you can become a prisoner of these ideas, these arguments. It's like a group of soldiers, they attack this village and they kill a lot of people. They steal, they brag about what they did, how much loot they took away, all the atrocities they committed. They are so proud, they are bragging. In the same way, people and demons will rejoice when they make you a captive, when they make you a prisoner of their ideas. Then they are rejoicing because we have another victim, we have another prisoner. He is on our side now. And when he's on our side, he cannot be on the side of God. And then you are a slave. And you may say, no, I'm not a slave. Who are you to tell me this? Don't you know I'm a free person? I can do whatever I want to do. I am free. I am no slave of no one. Well, if you allowed, maybe in your innocence, that these ideas, these concepts, theories, have crept into your mind, into your, into your system, then you are a slave, my friend. Whether you like it or not, whether you agree or not. Because you allow these ideas from humans, destructive things, and of demons to guide, to steer your life. And then you are a slave. And then you will not be able to reach the goal God has for your life. Because God has a plan for your life. There's so much in you, so much potential, and it has to come out. But because you allowed these ideas, these philosophies to come into your mind, don't be a slave, my friend. Let me read another translation. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. High sounding nonsense. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Stand in awe of his greatness, his majesty. Lift your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one. He calls them each by name because of his great power and mighty strength. Not one of them is missing. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. So what should you do? First look at the greatness of God, at his majesty. God is so great, he is so mighty. He has such a might. He fills the earth with his wisdom, and he wants to fill you with his wisdom. So first look at his creation, at the majesty of God and his creation. Where does my real help come from? I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. 
The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Be blessed my brother and sister. Where does your wisdom come from? There are so many weird ideas in this world about uh, religion, about the Bible, about God, about life, about racism, all these issues, you name it, so many issues. And I hear so many crazy weird ideas. And all depends on your source. Where does your wisdom come from? From people who are confused, who are angry? Demons who hate you, who hate God, who hate the God that wants to live in you? Or from God? And then you say, but what about, what about my life, the world? Don't I have to work? I cannot gaze all day to God and this Bible of you and read and pray. How can I manage my life? No, no, no. First, look at God. Be filled with His majesty, with His greatness, with His wisdom. And all this anger will flee out of you. This darkness will leave you. And then you can face your life, your world. Fix your eyes on God. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. You are a child of God. Anyway, I hope that you are a child of God. If that's not the case, first you have to accept Jesus Christ into your life. But if you are a child of God, you are being born again, then you are seated with Christ in the heavens. And that's why the Bible tells us, tells you today, my friend, fix your eyes on God. But then you say, but what about my world? First, fix your eyes on Jesus, on God, and then you can face your life, your world. Come and live in my heart. If you don't know God, then I want to say this prayer especially for you. First of all, the Bible tells us if, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that He lives, that He is Jesus Christ, then you are saved, then you are a child of God. You can say, Lord God, please forgive me in Jesus' name. All my sins, all the things I did wrong, please take them away from me, cleanse me with the blood of Jesus Christ. At this moment, I ask you, Jesus, come and live in my heart. I want to be born again. I want to be a child of God. Come and live in my heart. I want to hear your voice. I want to follow you the rest of my life. Thank you that I am now a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord God, in Jesus' name, help me to fix my mind my affection, my ideas on you and the things that are from you, that are of you. Take away all these ideas, these opinions that are not from you. Wherever, whatever the source may be from people or demonic, take them away from my mind, from my spirit and fill me, Lord God, fill me with your philosophy, with your wisdom. Lord God, fill me with you for you are Emmanuel fill my life saturate me with your presence I pray this in Jesus name amen if you want you can subscribe or like this video be blessed and stay blessed